This is the Soul Filled Sisterhood Podcast, and I'm your host, Nicole Burgess, licensed marriage and family therapist and an empowerment mentor for women. The information shared in this podcast is not a substitute, nor is it to convey professional, psychological, financial, or medical advice. If you could use such services, please seek them out from someone you trust. Now here is today's episode. Episode 59. Well, welcome to season two, sisters. Hey, before I dive into today's episode, I want to share with you one of my new free gifts to you. Some of my clients that I work with, they like to do sometimes like a, a short little guided meditation before we begin our work together or something very short that helps them get back to center or into the, the moment. And so I created some free meditations for you. I'm going to have the link in the show notes, but you can also go to NicoleBurgessCoaching.com forward slash mindfulness, and you can sign up and get those free uh, meditations. I also just want to um, have you stay tuned or kind of give you a quick little heads up that in October, I'm going to be doing a summit and it's called the right now it's called the self-care summit improve your bottom line and your personal life. So I've got some amazing coaches lined up to speak about specific areas of your life as an entrepreneur and incorporating self-care into that. So I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, on to today's episode. I asked those of you who are on my email list to send me some topic ideas that you were really interested in hearing about, and I received some wonderful be- feedback. This one today is actually from Jasmine, I hope I pronounced your name right. And she asked about the fears that rise up around being visible as an introvert. And I will challenge that fears are normal for anybody and everybody, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, HSP, non HSP. And it's remembering what do you do with those fears? Do you give them power or do you take them away? Do you face them or do you do it anyways? And as you've heard on many of my previous podcasts, most of my guests have talked about various fears that have come up over their life and how they've actually faced them, whether it's been easy or hard. But the introversion piece of it, what I often find is, again, going back to Myers-Briggs, you know, it's, it's more than just being an introvert or an extrovert. It's the letters that also come after that, too. As an HSP, as an introvert, Oftentimes we can get really stuck in our head if we're not mindful about that because we do a lot of really deep processing of information. One thing over my career as a therapist, remember I've got years, I'm actually going on like 15 years of being a licensed psychotherapist. And it surprises me when I actually think of how many years I've been doing this. But the biggest piece of it is that as we are, you know, as we get older and as an adult, our ego, it loves to try and control things. It loves to think that it knows all the things that it can do and tries to really keep our our world, right, our little world in check with what it thinks we need as individuals. And so fears are nothing more than really ego-based, It's instead of trusting that things are going to unfold how they need to, fear pops up and it's right outside of the present moment. So, for example, you know, anxiety, fear-based thinking is fear of being humiliated, fear of failing. I used to really have a fear of success. I don't so much anymore, but that was one of my biggest things. And the reason I had that, what I would justify that fear of is like, oh my gosh, you know, if people really started to listen to these podcasts that I do, if I became really, um, I don't know if if things went viral, then I'd have so many different people requesting information. I do get a lot of requests and some of them I'm able to answer. Some of them I'm not. Some of it's more like spam stuff, but it's really remembering. It's like, you know, you can also ask for more help that as your business grows or as you climb the corporate ladder, it's okay to delegate. And I think I forgot that earlier in my career. It's like, oh, oh yeah, it's okay. I can't ask for help. Some other fears that I often hear from the clients that I work with, the fear of being seen as an imposter, the fear of not being perfect. Again, that's like a classic fear of what other people will think of you. That's so much is based in anxiety, right? It's like, I'm going to be judged because of this or that I'm not enough of this or that because I'm not old enough, young enough, smart enough, whatever 
you know, that fear wants to conjure up. It's still the fear of being seen, the fear of just like, hey, I get to be me and I'm embracing all my imperfections and my flaws because everybody on this planet is imperfect. I think we can forget that at times. You know, as I've, I've stated before, I'm a recovering perfectionist. You know, my first podcast, which was Launching Your Daughter, I really worried about, one, that either the podcast wasn't even going to make it, and it did really, really well as time went on and I got some incredible guests on and the topics I was covering, parents really wanted to hear about it. Then I started to fear that, oh my gosh, maybe I'm going to get some really negative or harsh you know, feedback and I don't want to deal with that. And I didn't. So I wasted a lot of energy in that fear thought. It's remembering, you know, whatever people think of you is truly none of your business unless they say something to you. And you still have the ability not to take it personal. You have the ability not to respond to it if you choose not to. I've gotten feedback on some of my Facebook posts at one point in time was criticizing something I had put out there. And I'm like, eh, that's where they are in this moment. It's their journey. It's not my journey. So it's remembering embracing who you are fully as a person, that you're not going to be liked by everybody. And that's okay. You're not on this planet to be liked by everybody. That it's remembering to really anchor your thoughts and what is this goal that you have set for yourself? Are you wanting to write more stories for people? Are you wanting to be on more podcasts? Are you wanting to grow your business? Are you wanting to ask for a raise? Are you wanting to ask somebody out on a date? Anchor on the goal, anchor your thoughts on that goal that you have versus what may or may not happen with happen with it. As I've talked before, it's also remembering it's like let go of the outcome, meaning how that's going to unfold for you. If I stick an expectation on, I'm going to, let's say, ask a friend of mine to do, I don't know, uh, to do a podcast episode with me. And I'm like, they absolutely have to do it in the time frame that I want to, which rarely ever happens. (laughs) It's if if I stick that expectation on them, that's my ego saying I know them more than they do and that they need to do exactly what I need to do when I need to do it. No, I don't have control over them right? It's just letting things unfold how they need to unfold. They signed up, everything is fine. You know, we did the podcast, all that good stuff. But it's remembering things are going to unfold in the time they are meant to unfold. And sometimes if we're so stuck in that hidden agenda, that need for control, need it to be perfect, right? You're going to cause your own suffering with that. You know, there are sayings that I'm sure some of you have heard this, and I say often to my clients too, it's progress over perfection. Done is better than perfect. And if this is the first time that you're listening to this podcast, and I would in- encourage you to go back to episode 17. That's where I talk quite a bit about the limiting beliefs that we learn fairly young. Um, and we, again, our subconscious is the unfiltered part of it. So it takes it as though people are untrustworthy, or I'm never going to make it. I'm never, you know, I'm maybe passionate about this thing, but I'm never going to make money on it. And that's depending on, you know, the environment you were brought up in, the caretakers, the parenting, the messages from your culture, the messages from, you know, your community, all that sort of stuff impacts that when you're growing up. But as an adult, it's remembering, it's like, you're not a victim to this. You are making your own choices. So you can keep giving those fears a lot of power and keep you playing small, keep you stuck, or you can feel that fear and you keep taking those small steps forward because that's where your momentum really grows. Remember, as an introvert, as an HSP, you can be quiet yet incredibly fierce. You can be gentle and courageous. It's not the either or, it's the both and. That whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, again, HSP or non HSP, you're going to feel fear at certain times of your life. It's whether or not you allow those fears to control you or you tell them to take a back seat and shift that part of you who wants to run everything for you and say, you know what, I've got this. Sometimes having that conversation with that part who really is so scared to let yourself be visible, it's have that conversation with it and say, what are you most scared about? 
And then remember, you are more than your thoughts. Just because you have a thought doesn't make it true. And you're able to shift and change those thoughts. You are so much more than your mind. In episode one, I talked about contemplation. And then throughout my episodes, uh, when I've done solo episodes or when I've talked with guests, remember journaling meditation is very big in the work that I do with clients. And the reason is, is so that you can learn about those shadow sides, those the shame that may be holding you back or the old thoughts that you were still holding on to as if they are true. And when you do that inner work, you can help not only your business thrive, your relationships thrive, but you as a human being then can thrive more. It's being able to step more into that vulnerability of just saying, you know what, this scares me and I'm going to do it anyways. One of my guests that she's upcoming, we were talking and, um, it was so funny. She was telling me, she's like, yeah, I just try to kind of like throwing spaghetti up against the wall. And there's so many coaches that I have heard before. They're like, don't do it that way. Don't market this way or don't try this. And yet she was like, and that's what I did. And it's been very successful. <laughs> so again, it's remembering, do what works for you. Sometimes you're going to try things and sometimes they're going to <laughs> fail incredibly big. And other times they're going to succeed and you won't know unless you try it. And I'm not saying that if you're, you know, in a nine to five job, you're like, I so want to start my own business just to quit. If you need the income, what I did, you know, when I switched from the corporate world into becoming a therapist and now I'm going more into the coaching is like, yeah, I do it in steps. I made sure I had income coming in. And yet I slowly made that transition into whatever field that I wanted to be in. So you can do the same thing. I know some people, they just dive right in and they're totally fine because they've got money saved up and then they've got a cushion so they can totally do that or they've got a second income coming in, whatever. If that works for you, beautiful. But if you don't, do it in the way that works for you. It's embracing the unknown, that your life is gonna unfold in the perfect way that it needs to unfold for you beginning to have that trust and letting go of perfection, letting go of the need for control. It's going to be whatever it's going to be, whether you want it to be or not. Again, you can do goal setting and you can take steps towards it. But the reality is life is seriously going to unfold however it's meant to unfold for you. So a quote that I have on my wall that sits in front of me when I record these podcasts is from Amelia Earhart. And she, this quote is, the most difficult thing is the decision to act. The rest is merely tenacity. The fears are paper tigers. You can do anything you decide to do. You can act to change and control your life. And the procedure, the processes is its own reward. So really think about that piece of it that the fears, our thoughts, that they're just that. They really are paper tigers. They're stories we can latch onto. They're, they're made up in our head. And yet every time you take a step towards that anchor, towards that goal, towards the end thing you're going towards, yeah, you may have some twists and turns in it. Maybe there are some failures in it. But remember, the failure is not a person. It's an event. So can you learn from it? What did you learn from it? Every time you keep taking a step forward, you're gaining momentum, you're gaining information. I, with my clients, I often say, you're gaining data. It takes me back to when I used to be a business analyst and we looked at a lot of data um, from when we did co- um, computer software implementations and trainings. But that's all it is. The relationship exchanges that you have, communication exchanges that you have, how a person responds to something you request or talk about is nothing more than data. You decide from your own filters what you make it to mean. And if you're looking at it from a purely observation standpoint, you don't have any attachment to it. It's just like, oh, they decide not to do this or, oh, this doesn't seem to be working based on this, this, and this. So do I just need to pivot slightly and try this thing over here to see if that has a different result? That's it. If you, again, one of the things I see happens often with introversion HSP is getting 
stuck in the thinking process, right? We, we do a lot of thinking, which is a beautiful thing. And you can literally get stuck in the overthinking. It's the analysis paralysis thing. It's like, there's too much information. I can't take any steps forward. And yet you choose not to, and you absolutely can. Sometimes it's like, you don't need to know every little detail about it. Even though as an HSP, we really want to, because we want to make that right decision. (laughs) And I totally get it. Sometimes you just need to say, okay, I've got enough information to make a decision and then I can go forward or I can pivot and do something different. How long do you want to think about it before you take that step? I talked with a woman at some point in time over the years. Actually, I've talked to quite a few of them. They're like, oh, I'm not ready to invest in therapy or I'm not ready to invest in coaching. I want to think about it a little more. And I had asked them, you know, like, how long have you been thinking about doing this in the first place? Oh, about six months. I've had some say over a year. I'm like, well, how many more months or years do you want to give it to go after what it is you want, whether it's a healing place that you want to get to in your life or this dream that you want to go after? How much longer do you want to think about it versus actually take action? And as I've said on previous episodes, Every time you take a step, when you take action, anxiety has no control, no, no power over you because you're facing it and you're doing it anyways. Yep, your pits can still be sweaty. The palms of your hands can still be sweaty. You may be shaking in your boots. I mean, there's been, I remember when I did a podcast, when I, again, when I was doing launching your daughter, I remember I was shaking when I was doing an interview with somebody else on their podcast, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to screw this up or I'm going to sound really funny. We got done. They're like, oh, that was the best podcast ever. And I'm like, shoo, really good, right? But my fear was really trying to take over and I did it anyways, even though my physical body still had a reaction to what was going on, I did it. Nobody died from it. The world didn't blow up from it. It's looking at it's like, wow, you know, whatever story I want to create in my head, the odds are, the probability is extremely low that that thing I think is going to happen is actually going to happen. So my action step for you today is A, if you've not downloaded those meditations and you really need to get a little more calm in your life, Go out to my website, again, NicoleBurgessCoaching.com forward slash mindfulness and download those meditations. It'll sign you up for my email list and you know, yep, that's exactly what I want to do is get your email. And again, you can unsubscribe at any point in time that you want to, but it helps me see what you're interested in. And there's times that I ask my email list only, you know, certain questions about what it is they're needing or wanting or how I can best support them. The second thing is I want you to, to write down what is, what's that one thing you can do this week that does scare you, yet you can take a small step forward to make that happen. Remember, it's the bigger picture of it. All right, ladies, I hope you found this helpful and I look forward to talking with you again next week. Take care. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I hope you found it helpful or inspirational or even encouraging wherever you are right now in your life. If you know of another woman who may find this podcast inspirational or encouraging, please pass this along to her. I really do appreciate you taking the time to listen. Until next time, take care.